Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, thanks so, so much for being here. here. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. All right, so we, 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 do you mind that I sort of consider you a mentor? Uh, someone I look up to? Uh, I feel the same way as when people call me a pioneer. I feel like most of them are dead, but I do appreciate <laughs> that. Um, so actually, speaking of um, mentors and people you, uh, we look up to, who were some of your mentors uh, when you were uh, coming up in your career? Um, there's no question, but Craig McCaw was the most important in terms of, of my professional career. Yeah. In terms of a lot of my development, it was a fellow named Ed Hopper. Ed, uh, Ed's still uh, alive and well, and he's almost, he'll, he'll turn 80 this August. Uh, Ed was a real pioneer in the cable television industry. And in a sense, what I find is that, that he broke ground in cable television mm -hmm. in the uh, 50s and 60s, yeah, yeah. and then we broke ground in wireless mm. in the 70s and 80s, and I see that now with people we're working yeah. with and investing in. Each generation really gets to make new mistakes, mm -hmm. but it's awful nice to be able to learn from others that already set, made some That's mistakes right. and, right. uh, and can teach you things. That's right. Well, so let's talk about Ed or Craig. Uh, what were some of the uh, most important things that you felt that you learned from them? Cr uh, Ed was a, a down-to-earth guy, mm -hmm. and the things I learned from Ed really had a lot to do with the things they don't teach you in school, mm -hmm. how to hire people, how to think about building an organization, how to communicate effectively. Yeah, yeah. Craig was unambiguously a huge visionary in terms of communications. He, mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. Uh, inherited the old cable television and paging business when his father passed away unexpectedly yeah. at a young age, mm -hmm. um, and then built that cable business, but saw wireless as an opportunity to do a jump shift and really sold the family business mm -hmm. in order to invest everything in wireless. Mm -hmm. um, Craig often jokes that he is dyslexic, and he sees things in different ways than mm -hmm. anyone else. And I think the people I've been around, uh, I think about Fred Smith, who started mm -hmm. uh, Federal Express, or, mm -hmm. or, or Bill uh, at Microsoft, mm -hmm. they see things no one else sees. Yeah. And that, that is a unique, I don't know if it's a gift, skill, mm -hmm. talent, yeah. but it, it's something that's unique about those people. And Oftentimes they see things that aren't there, right? Yeah. But but they see things that no one else sees that are paths to success as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. I appreciate the, the, the really substantive answers. By the way, that's that's. Uh, I'm I'm learning a lot too as I as I'm sitting here listening. So so you you, you talk about something. Uh, that is of um, a keen interest to me as I'm thinking about scaling uh, my companies up, and that is the importance of hiring people or knowing how to uh, hire uh, really well. Uh, can you talk about some of your thoughts about what, what, what are sort of the key critical success factors that you look for in people, particularly key C-level folks uh, yeah. at your companies? It, it, it's interesting, and I, I joke with friends of mine that are lawyers uh -huh. that never studied how to write a contract uh -huh in law school, right? That mm -hmm. they teach you the law, but they don't teach you how to write a contract, which is the thing you spend an awful lot of your time doing. Yeah. In business school, you learn every conceivable dynamic in terms of a business, except how to fire and how to hire people. Those are the most important things. You know, one of the adages, I, I teach part-time down at, at, at Stanford's business school, and one of the adages I've learned from some of the professors there is the notion that almost everyone's tendency is to be too quick to hire, mm and too slow to fire. Mm -hmm. You know, that the, the too quick to hire, you know, Craig, for example, had a great way of thinking about that, that, that he insisted that when we were gonna hire someone, you interview the person, spend time with them in three different settings. Ideally, a setting in which they're more comfortable than you, their home, their office, a setting where you're more comfortable than mm -hmm. your home, your office, mm -hmm. and a neutral place, and get a chance to get to know them and really stress them in a way that's a little different than just the notion of asking a stressful question, mm -hmm. be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that the, the slow to fire piece is also important, mm -hmm. that, that sometimes you can figure out that people aren't just, just aren't working in the organization. Yeah. And Almost everyone I've known that's had to make a decision in terms of ha taking someone out of the business says, you know, I knew I should have done this earlier. Mm -hmm. it, you know, you do know, and you usually have the opportunity to make that decision. Yeah. But then how you organize a business, and, mm -hmm. and one of the things I know, Jonathan, you've seen in your business is that rapid growth is such an enormous challenge it is, because yeah. you, you do, we don't like to say it, you keep outgrowing people. That's right. And the key challenge that I feel like our organizations have been good at, not me, but our, the people in our team, is finding new roles for people mm -hmm. that don't, you know, your CFO yeah. 
when you start off. Yeah. It turns out really doesn't have the skills to do it. Find yeah. an opportunity, maybe even outside the financial area, yeah. to be able to do something that's productive in the business because the institutional memory, the knowledge, the yeah. understanding, the passion that they have yeah. can make a huge difference in your success. That's great. Wow, I, I almost feel like that you must have uh, 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 stolen my journal or something and read some <laughs> entries because that is exactly the, 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 the thing that I think about as I'm scaling one of my companies up that, that um, there's some good people that as an entrepreneur, early stage, you are in some ways grabbing uh, people who are willing and able and they're eager and they may even be your friends or buddies mm -hmm. that you worked with at Microsoft right. or Google. And then there is a stage that as you scale up, uh, maybe you're considering going public right. and maybe that CFO is not the, not the right person. And it is very important to uh, 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 find uh, the right roles for people. So I appreciate you, you underscoring that. Um, so, so then let's talk uh, along the same lines, this theme of hiring great people and recognizing talent or recognizing when the talent isn't, isn't uh, uh, at the right place. Um, do you have a similar philosophy uh, as an investor? At Trilogy, you guys do a lot of great deals. I know that from talking with you in the past, the deal flow is really excellent, so you see a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like uh, uh, you, you uh, uh, what, what makes an entrepreneur really investable? Uh, you know, I, let me let me answer that question in two ways. Okay. And, and but there's a similar theme, and that is diversity of perspective. Mm. You know, one of the things, and, and I think you were touching on it, Jonathan, the the notion that you get a team of people. You know, I, I won't say Microsoft, but three people out of Amazon, uh -huh, right? Yeah. Three people coming ha that have worked together, have a great relationship, have a great camaraderie. Mm -hmm. If you look at them, often demographically often in terms of perspective, they overlap too much. They have the same perspective. They may have different technical skills. One may be a computer science engineer, yeah. one may be, have a finance background. But, but to have the diversity of perspective, to be able to grow a company and see problems before they are crises, mm -hmm. to be able to understand those things, I think that diversity is important. The second perspective is that we have as investors, and we try to honor and respect the views of all of our partners mm -hmm. and really get multiple perspectives. We have relatively little in common among the core investing team. There are I a see. couple of us that have that have overlapping skills in wireless, but, but we have uh, uh, an ex-leader from Microsoft mm -hmm. in uh, mm -hmm. uh, the tools business, an uh, ex-analyst mm -hmm. from, mm -hmm. uh, from JP Morgan. We've got people in the organization that come from different business backgrounds that I think bring different perspectives on investment opportunities. So I think that creates the opportunity for us to maybe make better decisions as long as we're listening to each other. Yeah, and back great. to the companies, as yeah. long as you've got those different perspectives within the company, I think you do a more effective job of addressing and, and responding to those challenges early. Yeah, that's fantastic, that's fantastic. Would you say, if, if I could be sort of opportunistic here, um, would you say that that's a, a clear differentiator or a competitive advantage that Trilogy has? Yeah, that you the, and your I, partners I think, have? I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to be uh, uh, boastful in terms of, of our having an advantage because I'm an enormous fan of, of some of the other firms mm -hmm, in town, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the Madrona organization, yeah. Ignition, which has morphed itself, are, are both fantastic That's investors, right, yeah. and there are others in town that, that Mavron and others that mm -hmm. are very strong. So I don't want to suggest that we create a competitive mm -hmm, advantage, mm -hmm. uh -huh. but I think it, it it gives us an opportunity to make fewer mistakes as an yeah. investor. You know, we're, some number of the businesses represented in this room are going to be billion-dollar businesses mm -hmm. someday. Yeah. And, and I'm not sure there is anyone that can accurately predict which one's going to work and which one's not. Mm -hmm. and I'm sure there are, there are smarter people than I that, that, that do see things that I don't do because it's a combination of their strategy, mm -hmm. their team, mm -hmm. the industry in which they operate, and broader trends. Yeah. Um, the, the dynamic then for them is that they have to pull all those things together. And I think that that, that dynamic then for us, going back to Trilogy, we, I, I think we see things that cause businesses to fail. I'm not mm -hmm. sure we, in all cases, see those things that cause them to succeed. I see. And those, in my view, aren't obvious when someone comes through the door, particularly yeah. in a seed or an A round discussion. I see. 
actually, actually, that's that's really uh, uh, that's really insightful. That that perhaps um, um, uh, the, the 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 failure points are a little bit more obvious than the uh, um, um, the, the the points that cause you to succeed. That's insightful. Thank you. So, so um, I'm, we're going to kind of stay on the investment uh, theme for just a little bit, and then we'll talk to uh, talk about some other stuff. Great. Um, is it fair for me to ask what are certain enabling technologies that you would bet on now if you were starting out now as an entrepreneur? What are the things that, that would that you might find more the most exciting? Well, let me give you my disclaimer first. Uh, right, okay. I, I just turned sixty years old last summer, and I when uh, uh, young people come and ask me what's the next new thing, I uh -huh. always say look to yourself because uh -huh. that that. You know, the opportunities we had in wireless, I mm -hmm. always believe, were because the companies we were competing against were populated by people that, that were grumpy old men and I grumpy see. old white men at I that see. time in the telephone yeah. companies. I, I find myself now fitting that description. Um, the, not so the, grumpy. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, uh, one out of four is not bad. The, um, uh, but the, but the, dy the dynamic, I think, for us is we're really interested in security, and I think that we've made several investments around uh, various forms of IT security. How do you make sure the devices aren't contaminated? How do you make sure the devices mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. contaminate the network? How do you yeah. make sure yeah. that there are opportunities for people to... to um, be able to build commercial businesses without getting infected or attacked uh, yeah, yeah. in various places. Yeah. You know, it, it, the obvious one is anything related to the cloud. Mm -hmm. You know, anything related to a SaaS model, I think, is is, is interesting. And mm -hmm. the whole notion now of um, uh, user-created industries, yeah, right? The yeah. the Uber, Airbnb mm -hmm. model, I think, yeah. is is interesting. But yeah, I think that absolutely. that what we we learn from, you know, we'll probably see 500 companies. And, mm -hmm. and to be clear, it's, you know, all the people in our, our team, particularly mm -hmm. our full-time investing team, yeah. will see those. And, and we learn from them. We mm -hmm. learn what's hot in terms of spaces and opportunities. Mm -hmm. We learn what's working. We learn what's not working. Yeah. And so I don't want to suggest we have a theme. Mm -hmm. We're looking for someone to fit into I that see. theme. And then, you know, we plug, well, we need three security companies, so we'll plug these three. And that's yeah. not the right way to do it in our estimation. I see. I see. That makes sense. That makes sense. So, so now we'll, we'll, that was great, John. And now we'll tack to um, um, something that I know it's a, a, a very close and near and dear to the hearts of a lot of entrepreneurs. And that is this notion of um, you're not running a sprint, uh, that you're really um, uh, doing more of a marathon, uh, to use a cliche uh, uh, um, metaphor. And so, so my questions here are around what advice would, do you have in terms of uh, to any entrepreneur who might be, maybe they've gotten their Series A, uh, uh, they're, they're, they've got the, 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 the primary team built, the core team built, you've got proof of concept for the product. In terms of work-life balance, Oh, I know that. Yeah, I know that you. You know, you have two uh, uh, grown sons, or they're uh, um, a college age uh, on up, and uh, you have a lovely wife, and and who is very successful in her own right. What advice do you have in terms of how how do you best balance uh, building and scaling up a company with all of the stressors, with um, also being a, a great father and a great husband? Well. I I think that everyone's got to do it different, right? Mm -hmm. that, that you've got to define it yourself. Uh, one of my uh, partners, Amy McCullough, mm -hmm. uh, had a great piece of advice. She said, I finally got it. She's got two young kids, much younger than mine. She said, I finally got it when I started relaxing about the notion that I'm not going to create balance every day, mm -hmm. right? I'm mm -hmm. not going to read to the kids every day. Yeah. I'm not going to, you know, uh, shortchange the business mm -hmm. every day, yeah. right? That, that you've got to view it in longer terms, mm -hmm. you know, back mm -hmm. to your metaphor about mm -hmm. marathon mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. sprint. I mm -hmm. think that, that the dynamic for me was, you know, my sons are 25 and 19. So mm -hmm. we were relatively older mm -hmm. uh, when we had our kids. And therefore, a lot of that, that crazy time for us occurred um, either went before we had kids, mm -hmm. or I remember Terry bringing boxes of checks home. She was uh -huh. the CFO of Western Wireless, right. and, and Tim, who's now 25, would be you know sitting on the floor between uh -huh. us, uh -huh. and uh, uh, even before he could walk, mm -hmm. and we'd be signing checks, uh -huh. right? The, the, so you know, my my uh, Tim's got a business degree from Trinity down in Texas, and he mm -hmm. said he learned more around the dinner table yeah. than he did you know at the in his finance class. Mm -hmm. In, in school. And I think that that dynamic is, you know, for us, you know, having life 
run kind of run together rather yeah. than to compartmentalize mm -hmm. is part mm -hmm. of the answer. Yeah. To not be afraid to take a call at home. There are, I know guys, men and women, that will say, you know, I will never take a business call mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. You know, that's silly, right? Yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah. Nor is it you know, reasonable to never take a personal call yeah. at the office, right? right? It right. all runs together. And, and the earlier the stages of the business, mm -hmm. the more important that is. Yeah. And I think that the one thing, and, and as you know this in your life, mm -hmm. right, kids will trump a tremendous amount, yeah, right? I mean, right. It, it's one thing to find balance in your marriage or mm -hmm. your relationship yeah. with your spouse, partner. It's another thing in terms of kids because that that time is in a more real sense fragile, yeah. and and so you, you know you do. I think you have to shift the balance mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. in favor of family once you've got kids. Yeah, no, that's really great. I actually uh, truly appreciate these more nuanced, balanced answers because I think all, all all too often, especially in this day and age of Twitter and shorter sound bites, that we tend to. Um, um, it's an easy trap for a lot of us uh, entrepreneurs to fall into is to speak in platitudes, to say, oh, I'll never, you know, I, 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 when I come home, I'm done, and right. I leave my work at home. Right. And, and so I think that, that, that uh, um, your, your very um, balanced perspective is is No is one acu ever accused me of short answers. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's good. That's good. Um, so uh, if you are an entrepreneur and you need more help, as as in sometimes I, I, I seek advice from you. What 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 what? Uh, how should they think about building a board? And 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 you're on, on lots of uh, boards of very successful companies, including Microsoft and I think Columbia Sportswear was one. And uh, Costco. And mm -hmm. Costco. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Thank you. Um, so so what what makes a great board? Highly functioning board. Yeah, I, I think I'm on public company boards, mm -hmm. and I'm also on private company That's boards. Right. And I think the answers have some similarities, but some fundamental differences. Yeah, I would the, love to the, hear that also both of those. Yeah, the, the differences the, too. Yeah. Uh, the similar, the most important similarity goes back to this notion of diversity, and yeah. and it is important to have people with diverse backgrounds. Yeah. But diversity of perspective is the most mm -hmm. important mm -hmm. thing. Someone who has lived, been in. You know, a business and run a business, a former CEO, particularly someone who is no longer a CEO mm -hmm. simply because of time, yeah. I think is tremendously valuable. Yeah. I, I had the benefit of having both Dan Evans and Slade Gorton on boards that mm -hmm. I chaired. Mm -hmm. Someone who comes from government, particularly in a telecom business uh -huh. where government yeah. plays a critical role, was very helpful. Yeah. They often provided a perspective. I was on a board. ADIC, a storage company years uh -huh. ago, with a retired general. And, mm -hmm. and he also provided perspective. I think that having gender balance within boards is vitally important. Mm -hmm. I'm That's on the right. board at Columbia Sports where mm -hmm. we have a, a board and, you know, for better or worse, um, uh, probably 80% of the clothes that Columbia makes uh -huh are purchased by women. That's 100% yeah, yeah. of clothes yeah. for women mm -hmm. and probably 60% of clothes for men uh -huh. Uh -huh. as well as all the clothes for children. Yeah, yeah. And, and so you know, we benefit from having three women, right. different yeah. demographics, different perspectives on that board. Mm -hmm. And I, frankly, I think we'd be better off if we had more women on mm -hmm. that board mm -hmm. because they look at a lot of the challenges that we have different. I think that the, the differences mm -hmm. that come in smaller boards mm -hmm. have a lot to do with time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, that, that earlier stage companies, a lot of times the phone will ring um, at odd hours. Mm -hmm. The phone mm -hmm. will ring, you know, I'm on the board of a company called Game Changer that's uh -huh. based in New York. Yeah. And I talked to Ted Sullivan who runs that, mm -hmm. that business mm -hmm. at least once and probably on average twice a week. Oh, They're sure. not necessarily long calls, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but, but that never happens, you know, with a, uh, with a public company board. You're, mm -hmm. you, you know, you have long, you know, Microsoft meetings are two full days. Mm -hmm. They're very intense. There's a very yeah, thick right. notebook of preparation yeah. materials, but but the time, the context between board meetings are far fewer than mm -hmm. with smaller companies. Mm -hmm. So finding board members that have the time, and I think that frankly finding someone who is younger mm -hmm. uh, and closer to the age as well as someone maybe who has more experience regardless of age is helpful. That, that I think that, that a lot of the businesses around that, that are represented here um, 
is someone my age has a hard time relating to. I would hate to have a board full of people who have nice resumes, mm -hmm. but are all in their 50s and 60s or beyond mm -hmm. on a company that, that's trying to create a new app or trying to create yeah, a new yeah, game or yeah. trying to create something yeah. mm -hmm. that, that's unique in the mm -hmm. security business. Because we just, it, it, there are fundamental differences. And I think that, that then the obvious point, final point is just diversity of expertise in a yeah. real sense. Having someone who has a CS background, yeah. having someone who has a finance background, having someone who has a understanding of the marketplace mm -hmm and sales and marketing activities yeah. and is, is willing to express themselves in a way that's helpful to the management team. That's great. That's great advice. Um, so we're now going to talk about, speaking of boards and things, we're going to talk about your work uh, uh, on Microsoft's board. And in particular, I'll, I'll say that we were talking backstage about how, how it, it, it was really um, uh, um, uh, interesting to observe, like maybe a couple of years ago, if we did this event, and we would sometimes do it here in Bellevue and sometimes do it in Seattle, and we'd cut sort of uh, change the venue up depending on on uh, various factors and 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 in, in a couple of years ago I think that we did it here and it was not uncommon to see a lot of uh, Microsoft folks both because it, we were in their backyard um, but perhaps there was like a a bit of a, a local maximum in terms of uh, within that particular uh, uh, population an interest in leaving a company and striking out and doing something on their own it sort of feels like, and this is at this, right as of this point, uh, somewhat anecdotal versus uh, completely data-driven here, but it does seem like that that's a little less so now. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what reasons might you attribute that to? Uh, well, I, I think, it, you know, Microsoft has been blessed by having three fantastic CEOs mm -hmm. uh, in its 40-year history. Um, and I think I, I, I don't want the comments I'll make about Sachet in any way mm -hmm. indict sure, you know, the, sure. the work yeah. done yeah. before. Yeah. But I think that 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 Sachia has made a, many changes that go to culture, and yeah. that that you know, as uh, uh, Clay Christensen, first mm -hmm. one I heard say culture trumps strategy, right? Mm -hmm. That, that not to yeah. say the absence of strategy yeah. Yeah. is possible, and, and, but, but there are cultural transformations, I think, that, that are taking place there. There's a tremendous amount of energy that I mm -hmm. see. In fairness, I joined the board a year and a half ago, right? Yeah. So, and Satya, next week, I think, is Satya's two-year anniversary right. as yeah. CEO. Mm -hmm. So it, it is, my observations are as a late comer, but you know, someone in the community, I, I think you're right, we see far fewer Microsofties that are starting new businesses mm -hmm. today. And I think that, in a sense, is a leading That's indicator. That's you see that from Trilogy, be yeah. Because, mm -hmm. because it's a better place to work. It's a fun place to yeah. work. And yeah. I think that the, there are a lot of interesting, engaging things going on yeah. there that, that are hu a huge positive for the company. And I think that they will, they're in exciting new businesses, what's going on in the cloud business, yeah. you know, back to businesses that, that grow, mm -hmm. you know, at or close yeah. to, to triple digits yeah. are yeah. really fun. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're rapidly changing and you can incubate a business that I think they've demonstrated you can incubate a business within a huge company yeah, I think Google's doing a fantastic job yeah, with a yeah. lot of their mm -hmm. innovations mm -hmm. I look at Amazon they're doing a lot of the mm -hmm. same things mm -hmm. even though they're a generation younger and yeah. I think you've got you know those companies yeah. have to continually reinvent themselves yeah. or they they die a slow death right 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 so, so so give us John give us a little bit of a, um, um, a perspective sort of from the inside so to speak how, how did Satya pull all that off? How, how do you change a culture en masse like that when you have, um, um, you know, I don't know what it is anymore, like about what, what, 60,000 people in Redmond? Uh, maybe I got that number wrong? I think it's, it's a been a while higher. since I've left. Yeah. It's a higher, I know. <laughs> uh, I know, you know, it's a uh, 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 much higher worldwide. But, but how did he pull that off? Is it, is it, and, and would you say generally something like that is more fundamental to uh, who he is, his management style, communication style, or is there almost like a, a playbook that you can that 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 other entrepreneurs and other CEOs could uh, adapt? I think adopt. The, the 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 business. You know, you have to look at it in a sense in historical perspective, right? The business that that was built while Bill was the CEO. Mm -hmm. Many people, including yeah, you, yeah, being right. pivotal in that yeah. success, and you characterized it in your introduction mm -hmm. that there was. A, a willingness to to innovate, and there mm -hmm. was a tremendous willingness to create new businesses that nobody had ever thought of or heard of. And I think that that innovation era was very important. The consolidation era that that Steve said grace mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. 
was also very important mm -hmm. that the, the strength, the tremendous growth that the company had, particularly enterprise software and, and the things that it, it did in the traditional Windows and, uh, and Office franchises, mm -hmm. built two of the greatest franchises that the country has seen in the last yeah, 50 years. That's right. and I think that, that what, what Satya faces is an environment where change is essential and mm -hmm. the, that we all are seeing changes as it affects the Windows platform, we're seeing changes as it affects the Office platform, and there are new innovative things that have to be done. So with that as introduction, the, the comment would be that Satya has embraced change. Mm -hmm. Satya is a believer that, that the change is good, change represents mm -hmm. an opportunity, mm -hmm. not a threat to Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And he's mm -hmm. deeply committed to making those changes in the organization, mm -hmm. in the way it partners with other mm -hmm. companies. Mm -hmm. you, you look at the tremendous number of things that have been done in the last couple of years, some of which Steve started, uh -huh. in terms of having Microsoft products like Office on other platforms. The willingness to be able to cooperate across platforms, to mm -hmm. port software onto mm -hmm. to Windows, mm -hmm. uh, to, to do things. Mm -hmm. the, the decision to buy the Minecraft uh, right. uh, yeah. business, uh -huh. the, to, to reinvest in games, the mm -hmm. number of small acquisitions mm -hmm. that Microsoft has made has mm -hmm. grown substantially. Yep. The, that represents a, a, a cultural willingness to say not it, it's okay that it wasn't invented here yeah, that yeah. that those kinds of commitments I think an openness and trying to infect the team to try to infect the employees is exactly what the the uh, Microsoft led by Satya is about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. That's a good uh, sort of unpacking of a lot of the things that, that we don't often uh, appreciate from the outside. And those of us who are alums uh, are deeply curious about, mm -hmm. about, about how those changes can, can and, happen. And in yeah. general, what I find with most of the Microsoft alums, passionately desirous of seeing that company succeed. That's right, that's right, it, it, absolutely. Kind of, you know, you, you can sort of take the boy out of Microsoft, but not Microsoft or out girl. of the boy. Or girl, that's right, that's <laughs> right. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, you and I, one of the things that, 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 that I really respect about you is how you, uh, over the course of your career, started to pay attention to things that are um, beyond just uh, uh, what you do as a, as a, as a captain of industry uh, in your segment. So you and I worked on a project together, which was to bring about computer science uh, mm -hmm. to Whitman College, uh, our, our uh, alma mater. So, so now why was that important to you? Um, uh, for, yeah. I think the, the broadest terms, right, that, that we all have a, a responsibility to give back, right? That, yeah. that, that, that's so cliche, that I'm almost mm -hmm. reluctant to say it, but, but it manifests itself in spending time. That time can be mentoring young people, that time can be creating opportunities. One of the groups I'm very proud of that we're involved with is Europe that brings uh -huh, that's right. it's a great uh, group. Young, yeah. pe young people, 18 to 24 year olds, that, that from minimum wage jobs gives them training and gives them opportunities in the tech business initially as interns. Mm -hmm. that, that the Whitman commitment for me, I was on the board for 23 years and it, it it, it, a lot of it starts off as it's my alma mater. It's kind of fun to go back. Yeah. Walla Walla is a great town with you know uh -huh. 200 wineries, but it becomes something where you see the the inherent tension between those on campus today that kind of want it to continue the way it is that alums that kind of want it to be the way it was. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. once you get a certain broader perspective, you say, in order to be responsive to the world, mm -hmm. it has to be more. And, and as you and I figured out two years ago, the notion that a liberal arts college doesn't teach computer science mm -hmm. because it's somehow pre-professional is absurd. Right. Most liberal arts colleges, particularly the, the, the nationally ranked ones like mm -hmm. Whitman, yeah. have great programs mm -hmm. and we didn't have anything. Yeah. And yeah. so you, know, you, I, and a, a few others right. got together and, and we now have three tenure track positions at That's Whitman, right. Uh, smart classrooms that will support it and what we're seeing uh, I, I was over on campus last week and what they're seeing is a tremendous uptick in uh, applications from the young people like you uh -huh. you probably uh, uh, didn't do your due diligence enough when you went right. to Whitman because right. you were writing games when you were uh, between lacrosse games in yes, college. That's right. I was. Um, yeah. uh, and we didn't have a CS program back then no, and, no, and no, so no. Yeah. it's essential and liberal yeah. arts I think marries so well with computer science in not just coding, but figuring out what the important problems you're trying to solve yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. No, I really appreciated it. Uh, you were the spearhead and the architect of that, and, and uh, I, 
I was really along for the ride on that one, and it was really a, a privilege yeah, to be along that would for that be, ride. That would be a first that you were ever yeah, along yeah, for the yeah, ride, no, anything. Absolutely, but, absolutely yeah, true in this case. So, so, so we're, we're going to conclude on one Great. final question, and knowing you, John, you're going to be uh, a very humble about it, but, but tell us about what you consider to be one of the biggest successes of your career and what you might have learned from that, 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 that you persist from, from project to project, uh, and, and what might uh, be interesting to the entrepreneurs in the room. Um, I'm never sure that any of the things that I have to say are interesting, but, but the, to me, the greatest pride I get is, as I go around the industry, if I go to our industry convention that's now 40,000 people for CTIA, um, the number of people that were in our organizations, going back to Macaw, mm -hmm. Western Wireless, VoiceStream, T-Mobile, Clearwire, mm -hmm. that, that are now running their own businesses, running parts of national carriers, and really there were a whole bunch of seeds, largely because we got lucky and found a lot of really talented people early on, and, and that industry is in some sense incestuous. Everyone knows each other, but but a lot of it goes back to the notion that seeds were planted here, and and a business once called New Vector, that's one of the roots of uh, of Verizon, was also planted mm -hmm. here. And it, it, you know the the Macaw organization is essentially AT and T Wireless mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. The yeah. the T Mobile organization is a rename mm -hmm. of of mm -hmm. VoiceStream. Yeah. You know uh, the the their Clearwire is a critical part yeah. of Sprint. So that's right. you know we've got folks that. Have have kind of infested yeah. uh, what would otherwise be these big monolithic companies. And yeah. I think that one of the things I'm really proud of is that Sprint bought Clearwire two mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. None mm -hmm. of the senior management of Sprint are still there. Mm -hmm. Two of the six in senior management at Sprint were on our team at Clearwire, right. Dow yeah. Draper and John uh -huh. Saw. Yeah. And I think that, that it's those people that yeah. have made a huge difference in, I think, making the world a better place that makes me most proud. That's great. I really appreciate it. Um, your your, your um, impact in the region and beyond has been tremendous. And uh, um, uh, it, it, uh, like I said at the beginning of your introduction, it is um, really a, a special honor to have someone uh, of your stature uh, grace our stage and to be able to talk about these lessons from, the, from um, prior industries and, uh, uh, and you're continuing to make an impact um, uh, with us um, uh, today. So and really you, appreciate that, John. And you are too kind. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. So a huge round of applause for John Stanton. Thank you so much. That was a lot of fun. I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, John.